just going to do my little report in here because uh, yeah, that wind is wild. If I go out into that point, it's going to blow me away. It's going to blow my hat away anyway. So uh, a beaut little uh, obelisk, and it is fighting for survival because that coastline is just being eaten away by the sea. So uh, don't know how much longer it's going to hang around for. They've got it uh, roped off. Uh, with some fencing and things but the obelisk was built I think back in 1855 and uh, it's um, looking after Cape uh, Dumbri I think it's called and the uh, the bay is uh, I could pronounce it wrong but I think it's Glitchen Bay so it marked a, uh, a safe sailing passage into a very nice uh, sheltered marina that's uh, just in front of me um, over the other side of these dunes but uh, yeah can't help but think that uh, that poor obelisk has a uh, bit of an uphill battle for survival. But 1855, it's been around since then. Cool little spot though. We'll see if we can get some nice photos. It's a shame we can't get the drone up because it's just so windy. But there's some absolutely incredible um, uh, rock features and things around this uh, coastline. An interesting footnote, um, back in 1859 there was a uh, pretty serious wreck, um, shipwreck out in Carpenter's Reef and it involved the SS uh, Melda. 89 people lost their lives and it's one of the worst maritime disasters in Australia history. Now it's interesting to point out that I said that the jail was, um, the one floor was the two prisoners were able to escape by picking out the, um, the limestone rock and they replaced it with um, steel plates. Well, those steel plates came from the boiler plates that were salvaged from the wreck of the Imelda. So interesting little uh, tie in there. Back in 1856 and 1858, there was 16,500 Chinese arrive at this spot here. Um, they came to this spot because over in Victoria, the state of Victoria, we're in the state of New South Wales, they were charging, um, I think it was like 10 pound per person, as kind of like a mining license, to go and join the gold rush in Bendigo and Ballarat. So the ships made a detour to South Australia here, I understand, this plate port here of rope, which uh, didn't occur that heavy fee. So there were 16,500 Chinese arrived here, and they ended up with, I think, between 320 to 400 kilometers of walking to do to reach those gold fields. So a pretty staggering, staggering amount. So if I can swing around to see the uh, lovely bay, and hopefully not too much wind. arrival. <laughs> Beautiful bay. We've just been cruising around uh, Robe and uh, there's a brewery next door. Not open yet so we've just called into Mike's um, Beef Jerky um, and it's it had a sample. It was very very nice so uh, he's uh, said that we're going to have, he's offered to take us around and uh, have a quick little intro of uh, his fine establishment. So uh, Cindy's in there at the moment with Jude, just uh, having a look around. 
and we'll see if we can get some facts on um, the, the secret behind a good beef jerky. Hey, get out there, Mike. Oh, how Here's are we, the folks? <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Mike's Beef Jerky. I'm just about to unload um, about 320 kilo worth of beef jerky out of our new uh, new smoker that we just commissioned this week. Good timing. Good timing. Right good good timing. We might even be able to find you a warm piece of beef jerky. <laughs> I look forward to it. Thank you. Well, I know you're a busy man, so... Uh, well, we'll head in there. Yeah. If you give me a minute, I'll come out and I'll bring you a nice big long stick of fresh warm beef jerky. Fresh out of the smoke. Righty ho. We can watch you from over this way. Yeah, you can Cheers. view from here while I'll be nice. back. <laughs> so we've been in this processing area now for three years. We started as a home-based business. So you might have seen our little trailer out on the yes. road. Selling from our trailer. It just took off. So we found this old shed and we refurbished it. So it used to be a concrete plant. So we put in a processing room and a packaging room. And then also our cool room. So this was where everyone does their morning duties. So they come in and we've got a bunch of tubs full of jerky that has been marinating overnight. We all stand in here, there's big trolleys which you'll see Michael be bringing out. Um, and we just start loading the trays. So we put about 80 kilos on each tray. Once they're finished, and they're in the oven, which you can't see now because our oven is at the back. These are our old ovens. Um, the guys start slicing the meat and getting it prepared for the next day's cook. So they'll bring out eye round or silver side roast, pop it into the machine here, slice it, and then put it in the mixer, which is over on the corner there with the orange cord. And Mike puts his secret herbs and spices. Mixes that, it goes back into the cool room in food grade tubs and sits there overnight. And the process then all starts the next day. So you'll see pretty soon, once that oven is loaded, it takes about three hours for the cook to finish. And that's what's happening right now. Mike is just going in to bring out the jerky. And once that jerky comes out, it'll go into the other room, which is a uh, contained area, and it'll just cool enough that we can package it. So while everyone's having their lunch, That'll happen. So it's going to take a bit because those trolleys are. So you can hear, he's just starting to pull them up. We'd like to get a screen later on so that people can actually see the oven that's back there because we always wanted everyone to understand what we were doing before this is what they'd see. And we'd load those. There'd be 40 kilos of meat in each one of those. With something like a, um, a TV with a camera, maybe? Yeah. yeah, something. Just so if people are in and they're viewing this, they can see. So there's the cooked jerky. It's just come out of the big oven at the back. And Mike will take it into the other room. That's one of four trolleys. So do you distribute it anywhere in particular or? Right now we're in South Australia and I can take you on the side as I tell you. Um, we're in South Australia and most of the grocery chains except for Woolies and Coles. So any South Australian, Drake's, Foodlands, we're now in OTR, X Convenience, AM, PM. And online? And online, we sell online. Now we're venturing into Victoria. So we've just gone into a few BPs and our distributor will start looking for more stockists in there. So now Michael just let that cool and everyone's having their lunch. So once that's cooled down, we all get in there and we start hand cutting. We haven't got our cutter yet. So we're using, which we always have, our little scissors. So everyone gets in there, cuts the jerky, then it goes into that machine. Bringing you out wow. <laughs> so this has gone through the cooking stage and the smoking stage. Yep. So it's this all is done in this one. is the this is the complete. Yep. There's Mike giving you go. Thank Terrific. You. Doesn't oh. get any better when it's fresh. Doesn't out get any home. fresher than this. Lovely and warm. Thank, Thank you very much, you guys. A nice fresh. And then what flavor is this? A black pepper? Chili. So oh, chili. Yeah, small that's chili. Nice. All I can say is I'm very pleased I've sampled the warm 
put you in pack it's a pretty damn good idea. <laughs> yeah. It's just nice. It's, it's juicy, flavoursome, and um, the chili is just, just right on for me. I love I love the chili. Yes, yeah, so we've kept it middle of the road, so it's not on the top, so it's sort of catered to the masses. That is the fundamental difference with our jerky. It's actually a cooked product. Yes. Um, a lot of beef turkeys are dehydrated. Um, and there's no heat in the dehydrators, so um, they tend to take a lot of the moisture out of it. Ours gets to about 72 degrees for a period of time, and then we turn the heat off, and it slowly comes off and allows us to retain more of the moisture in the product. So it is actually a cooked product.